So the last thing I'd like to cover in this series on general introduction to Sibelius features and also looking at Sibelius as an education-centric music tool is scoring to video. Um, reason being, in particular, in the education context, it can be a really engaging exercise for students to be involved in and uh, brings that visual aspect uh, into the world of music which can really do wonders to uh, reinvigorate their enthusiasm for the subject. So I'm going to switch to a separate computer and as you can see if I just scroll to the start of this one we've got a video window in Sibelius which is accessed via the view tab and panels area and I'll just choose the video option here is the shortcut Control alt v and when I've loaded a video file into Sibelius it'll come up with this interface here and if I just scroll to the start of this score the score is an example from James Humberston's book Sibelius 7 Music Notation Essentials uh, and it has a, a great tutorial on how to use the, the video feature and goes through this in great detail so uh, do look out for that you can still get copies of it on Amazon and through other sources I believe so under the play tab if I want to add a video to a score so I can sync the, the playback of Sibelius to that video file I start at the play tab and then if I just move our video window out of the way and I'll show the ribbon properly for a moment. We have a video section here uh, that gives us our uh, few options for bringing the video into Sibelius. Uh, in the case of a new score where you don't have a video added yet, this would say add video. As you can see, the dialogue's explaining that to us anyway. It's for adding or removing that feature. Uh, then these will uh, allow you to change the size of the screen. But these options down here uh, will do exactly the same thing. Uh, we can adjust the video screen size uh, quickly and easily with those. As you can imagine, using the, uh, the smaller sizes is a bit more convenient when you've uh, got actual writing to do in the score at the same time. So that's how we get our video file into the program itself. And what this does is it syncs to the Sibelius timeline. So the audio that's present in the video file, in the case of this example I'm going to play through in a moment, uh, it has Foley being movie sound effects and dialogue uh, running along. And uh, there's a so there's a, an embedded uh, WAV or MP3 file or whatever it is in the, uh, the video file itself that just plays through at regular speed. And the Sibelius score will play along with that at the same time. So you need to adjust your tempo in Sibelius to compensate for uh, things that might be happening in the video, which is standard practice for, uh, for scoring music to, uh, to video anyway. So let me just play through this example and you'll see exactly how this works in action and I'll try and move the video window around a bit if I need to to make sure we can see what's going on in the score. You got multiple tangles on the workshop. Okay, so that is essentially uh, exactly the output that you can expect once you've got your video file uh, into Sibelius and have completed a score to run along with it. This information we see at the, uh, the very top of the score in these little boxes here, if I just zoom in so we can inspect one, these are called hit points in video terminology and hit points are, are points in the, the timeline or in this case the, the score and staves where you would note a particular event in the video that occurs at that point in time. And they're really easy to add uh, in Sibelius. We just select a bar and it's very important to remember to bring the playhead to the selection so I'll just use the shortcut Y and you can also get to this in play options as well from the, the drop down menu under the play tab and transport area. I can choose play from the drop down menu here and then choose move playback line to selection and that brings our green playhead line to the bar that I had selected before and at this point if I choose to make a hit point from the video area and hit points option here I can either click this button at the top or 
choose create hit point from the drop down menu below. So in this case I'll just click the button because it's fastest and we have a, a new hit point here. So you can see what the composer has done here is has gone through and labeled all of the hit points appropriately. So something here for the helicopter noise, uh, go, go, go for the start of the uh, SWAT team entry or whatever it might be. Some specific things to the, the fight sequence that takes place. Uh, so he knows where all of the big, uh, the big clashes from the orchestra should come in or uh, uh, where certain crescendos and, and things like that should start and finish. So if I go into the edit hit points option here by clicking on the, the hit point drop down menu, you'll see all these options uh, turn up in here. So the ones that James has added here for the pre-prepared score are all found and can be edited as well. Um, but the new one that I've added is found here. They all occur uh, top to bottom in sequence, uh, of course, according to their occurrence in the timeline. So this one here, if I wanted to edit the, the name to something to make it a bit more memorable, click OK, and then we get something a bit more useful to uh, to remember that one by and if i just temporarily show the timeline as well uh, when you add hit points to the score you can see the timeline comes up with a little hit points lane to allow you to jump to all of those hit points directly so it's just another uh, really useful feature of the timeline itself as a navigation tool. Uh, so do try and remember that when you're, uh, you're scoring to video because it will save you a lot of time uh, jumping around between hit points when you need to copy something from one uh, to another for instance. Say all these punch sections and things like that. There could be a lot of information in, in one of those sections that could be copied over to uh, the gunshot one section for instance. So uh, do keep that in mind. And the other thing, of course, that's, that's really important about uh, adding hit points to the score, if we have a look at these punch sequences here, I'll just bring the, the video window back up and I'll bring my playhead to our location here. What we also want to be able to do uh, when editing video is scrub through. Uh, scrubbing is the, the term that they use in video and audio editing for moving back and forward uh, through the timeline. So we can do that in Sibelius using the uh, fast forward and rewind uh, options on the transport or using the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. So if I tap on the bracket key to the right, it will give me jumps of, depends what's in the score as to, uh, to how big those jumps are in terms of the notation. But if I hold down the shift key, we'll get much closer to a frame by frame walkthrough. So if we try and isolate some of these punches, for instance, and if I try and hone in on, uh, let's say, well, there's punch number one. That's a pretty, pretty tight one. And if we go along nice and slowly, there we go. And that's a pretty, a pretty tight grab if you wanted to put a big clash in there, as James has done for all of these notes occurring right on that particular hit. So there'll be instances where uh, you might need to change uh, the tempo and, and have retardandos and uh, accelerandos to compensate. Um, but that can, of course, be done uh, easily at any point with tempo marks and, and line marks for your writ and acceleration. So we'll keep those few things in mind and point those out to, uh, to students if you're doing this as a class project as well. Go, 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 go! This is X-ray control. You have initiated the extraction. We do not yet have visual. Do you copy? <laughs> Zero, do you copy?